Hello everyone. Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos. In this video, we learn about the local buffer synchronization. Uh, prior to this video, in the last video, we have learned about the buffering of SAP tables. So how the table buffers are maintained. Okay, so they are they have to be synchronized now and then. The advantages and the disadvantages of table buffering. Okay, so in this video, we'll go into more details about the local buffer synchronization, how it happens. The table buffers reside locally on each application server in the system. This makes it necessary for the buffer administration to transfer all changes made to buffer buffered objects to all the application servers of the system. So we have table buffers, they reside locally on each application server. Each application server has its own buffers. So whenever changes are made to a buffer in an application server, it has to be synchronized with all the other local buffers on the other application servers also. So in the following figure, you can see the basic model of the relation between a program or table buffer in the application server and the database. So we have the database here, which is shared among the different instances. Each application server has its own table buffer. So, whenever a program for the first time it accesses some data, okay, so the first read is done from the database. The data is brought and kept in the table buffer. So, from the second time onwards, whenever the same data is accessed, it is read from the table buffer and not the database. Okay, so that is same for all the application servers so the first time whenever any data is fetched it is fetched from the database and kept in the table buffer of the application server and from then onwards uh, whenever we execute a program on an application server it reads if the data is present in the buffer then it reads the data from the buffer only now if a buffer table is modified it is updated synchronously in the buffer of the application server from which the change was made. The buffers of the whole network, that is, the buffers of all other application servers are synchronized with an asynchronous procedure. Now, whenever a table buffer is modified, it has to be synchronized. Okay, so far we know that. But this synchronization, it happens asynchronously. Okay, entries are written in the central database table, DD log after each modification on a buffer table. Each application server reads these entries at fixed time intervals. So what happens? All the, whenever a change is made to a buffer in the table of a table buffer in an application server, so that is recorded in a central database table which is common among all application servers, DD log, the table name is DD log, okay? so. Uh, every up for synchronization, this table is used for synchronization. So every application server at periodic uh, intervals of time, it reads the data in this DD log table. Okay. If the system finds entries that show a change to the data buffered by the server, this data is invalidated. If this data is accessed again, the system reads it directly from the database. So what happens? Now, say this is application server 1 and 2. So here this program has made some changes to this table buffer. Okay, so simultaneously the changes are saved in the database also. Okay, so database is always up to date and this table buffer also is up to date. Now, but however this application server 2 table buffer has old data values. Okay, say my synchronization program it runs periodically for every 2 minutes. So now this change was made. So after only one minute, the synchronization program will run. So until that one minute, this table buffer will have only old data. Okay. So that's how it happens asynchronously. So whenever this change is made in this table buffer, it's recorded in the read log table. Now after one minute, the other application servers, they read the read log table. Okay. And they'll come to know like, oh, the table buffer contents have been changed and they will um, they will just invalidate the data in their table buffers and 
do a fresh read from the database and again bring the up-to-date data from the database into the table buffers. So that's how local buffer synchronization works. To prevent the table being constantly loaded to the buffer and then immediately invalidated then the table can only be loaded again to the buffer after a waiting time following invalidation. Okay, the program it runs asynchronously means the synchronization program it runs at certain intervals of time. So only after until that time the other table buffers will have all data and when that program runs they they you know invalidate they uh, means like they flush the data from their table buffers and the new data is brought from the database a read a uh, read action from the da uh, database is performed on the database is performed and they again bring new data now the advantage of this method over a synchronous method where the network immediately reports to each change to the buffer data of one app server to all other servers is that the load on the network is kept to a minimum okay now why this asynchronous procedure is followed because whenever changes are made to the table buffer if the change has to be immediately sent to other table buffers on all application servers it will put very high load on the database see every second you know I have whatever change I am doing on any application server it has to be again communicated to all other application servers that will put a huge load on the network that's why it's it's not synchronous the changes are not synchronously sent they are asynchronously sent means like after some time they are sent if the buffers are synchronized after each modification each server has to report each modification to a buffered table to all other servers using the network this has a negative effect on performance right so it will put a huge impact on the performance the network will slow down so obviously when the performance of the sap system will slow down so this concept of buffering will not fetch us in any way that's why this asynchronous synchronization is performed now the disadvantage of this method as compared with synchronous updating is that the data is not up to date during the time interval between two synchronizations now okay now we have learned the advantage of this uh, asynchronous synchronization that the whenever a change is done on a table buffer immediately it's not sent because it will put a very high pressure on the network now what is the main disadvantage see like at this point of time 12 o'clock some data was changed here in the table buffer in the database but the synchronization program will run only periodically so say like after one minute it will run so until that one minute all this other application servers will point to the old data so if you run any program on the other application servers sorry if you run the same program or any other program using that same data on other application servers they will give wrong results they will use the old data and they will output it okay that's why the period of synchronization is kept very is like very short okay it's like hardly 45 seconds or one minute but still within that time there are chances to get wrong results because the other table buffers where the data is still not changed will will have the old data values and they will give wrong results the asynchronous buffer synchronization method restricts the number of tables that can be buffered so that's why we have kept a restriction to overcome this disadvantage we sap has kept a restriction on the number of tables which can be buffered you must note the following when setting the table buffering only tables that are rarely written mostly read or for which temporary inconsistencies are of no significance significance shall be buffered so that's why here if you buffer only the tables which are rarely written okay which are mostly read we buffer them and the temporary inconsistencies are of no significance means say like within this one minute if you use that table data even though it gives a wrong uh, the the old value it is okay it is accepted by the business 
okay within that few seconds okay say like last second it was still pointing to say the value of 5 is updated in the ta table buffer here but still that particular data is pointing to value 3 only in the other application servers so even though that old data is used for a few fraction of seconds even though that's accepted by the business it will not cause any huge impact on our business so only such tables are to be buffered okay generally the ones which are mostly read which are hardly modified modifications are less than one percent okay only those tables are buffered tables with frequent modified entries must not be buffered otherwise there is constant invalidation and reloading which has negative effect on the performance that's what say like the tables which are like and now and then if for every one minute if you are updating the changes updating the table then that doesn't make any sense so here in i am changing some value here okay so it's changed in the table buffer and it's again changed in the database right now all the other application servers they have to be synchronized so if that frequent modifications are more then what is the purpose of buffering every time you have to flush the data from the buffer and reload from the database so it doesn't make any sense that's why the tables which have modifications less than one percent are only the candidates for buffering for central systems with only one application server it is not necessary to fill the dd log table with the modifications on buffered tables the insert dd log statements can be switched off by setting profile parameter rdisp bufref mode to send off exit auto now this synchronization concept comes when we have a distributed system that is an sap system with n number of instances say my sap system has only one instance then then it's very well and good we need not synchronize only okay so whatever value is updated in the buffer it's immediately updated in the database so there is no concept of this synchronization only so this dd log table need not be filled okay so the insert dd log statements in your ebap reports are they are switched off so you can set a profile parameter system wide this parameter to switch that uh, you know insertions in that table uh, recordings into dd log off okay so this is about local buffer synchronization so it happens asynchronously and the other important point is whenever a change is made to any uh, application server any of the changes are made to application server buffers table buffers it is recorded in the central dd log table so this that particular synchronization program it runs periodically okay so it 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 reads this dd log contents and then it makes changes to the other table buffers in other application servers then the data is flushed and again reloaded from the database okay asynchronous why we prefer because it will reduce the load on the network but the main disadvantage is within that fraction of seconds okay for the next until the next synchronization happens all the other buffers except the buffer on which you have ran the program except on the application server which has the buffer on which you ran the program it will have new values but if you run the same program on other application servers they will point to old data until synchronization is done okay so that is the main disadvantage so that's why what sap suggests tables which are frequently modified should not be preferred and where temporary inconsistencies are of no significance they can be preferred and the last point is when we have only one instance in an sap application server there is no purpose of doing this synchronization so the recordings to the dd log table are switched off using this profile parameter okay so this is about local buffer synchronization thank you